let us be aware that while they preach the supremacy of the state, declare its omnipotence over individual man, and predict its eventual domination of all peoples on the earth, they are the focus of evil in the modern world. Gentlemen, this is Democracy Manifest. America will find you, and we will bring you to justice. He came, we saw, <laughs> he died. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen in America. Uh, good afternoon to myself and all those around me. Today is July the 11th, 2023. It was a lovely day. It is a lovely day still. It's, uh, it's noon o'clock right now. I went to the beach. The sun was shining. Tried to take advantage of it, but unfortunately, uh, when all great things come out to play i.e. the sun the wind wanted to come out and fuck everything up and throw sand on our parade so i had to leave the beach after a couple hours so, but while i was out there i might have got a little bit of a heat stroke because i came up with uh one pretty weird topic of discussion that i would like to bring about to the world i don't know if uh, many people talk about this so I'll throw it in at the end of the episode, so stick around for that. But the two main things that I would like to talk about is, uh, well, Donald Trump is killing it. He's running around America uh, playing the bad boy, holding fucking, holding court around the nation. It's great. Well, it's not great, but it's cool to see, like, somebody doing that you know this is like whether you like him or not whether you like donald trump or not this guy is a fucking movie star he, he's not a movie star he's a character in the movie that you grew up loving okay anybody who hates him you cannot find a single person on this planet that hates donald trump but does not love everything that he is doing and represents and they can justify it themselves the way they want to that's simply the case. The man is a character in every movie we've ever seen because he's an actor. Of course, he's an actor. He's a personality. He's, he's the personification of America. He is a personality that is supposed to represent American greatness, which is why he somehow became president in the first place. Again, agree with it or not, it's up to you. But the man's mo making moves. He's making moves. He's running around the country. He's holding these rallies, these uh, speeches, these conventions, and he's drawing numbers. He's drawing numbers. I get, I get 50 views an episode on this pitiful little podcast here. I get 50 views an episode. This man's getting 5,000 people in person showing up to Bodunk fucking South Carolina to come and listen to him make fun of Joe Biden. That's awesome. If I could do that, well, I'd love it. I'd love it. I, I might even run for president in that point. But that's the first thing I want to talk about. Uh, I'll, I'll do that in a moment. Second thing I want to talk about. The uh, unstable situation that is American male fragility. The consciousness of the American male has plummeted over the years. Um, the lines of what makes... You know, a man, a man in America has been redrawn and society as a whole are coming to terms with that and trying to either force a change or force a continuance. And that's something I've thought about. And it's all brought upon by uh, my buddy, my friend, the guy that I go and uh, hang out with every other Thursday. No, bullshit. Uh, Jonah Hill. Yeah, so I see this guy getting run through the, run through the rails, run through the media, because he, he got fucked over. Okay, I'm gonna throw my bias out there. He got fucked over a little bit, and now he's getting the shit into the stick, so to say. 
So I want to talk about that. And the final thing that I would like to talk about <clears throat> in this glorious new episode from the, sorry for not posting anything over the weekend. I was uh, enjoying the weather. It's again in the Netherlands, beautiful weather is rare to have. So you got to go out and you got to enjoy it every day. Uh, nothing else was on the schedule. So, yeah, I had to take my time and enjoy my moments. But the final thing that the thought that has arisen in my brain today from my heat stroke out in the sun for two hours the reality of nature. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that. And we'll talk about that at the end of the, at the end of the episode. See what you have to say. So to start off, Donald Trump making moves, moving through America, left and right. He's I, I think he might be on a tour bus. I don't even think he's flying places like he. This guy is going city to city through all the southern states right now. I think he's in North Carolina, South Carolina. He's I think he was in Nashville a couple of days ago. And he's doing like two hour speeches at each of them. Now that takes movement. Okay. I don't want to throw anybody under the bus. No pun intended. But I think he's renting out Taylor Swift's bus. There's there's nobody else in America who has the logistical capabilities to move around that many people on tour buses other than Taylor Swift. I'm just saying. I don't know if it's true. I'm just throwing that idea out there. I'll let somebody else figure it out. Okay. But the man is making moves. He's giving great speeches. He's going out there. He's doing two hours straight, making fun of Biden, making fun of DeSantis, making fun of uh, what's her name? The vice. Pro- I don't even remember her name at this point. The vice president. It, he's killing it. He's killing it. If this man was actually making money off of his uh, his performances, he'd be richer than he already is. He'd be richer than Donald Trump. Now, there is, uh, what, what do you call it, uh, word on the street. You know, you hear around the, the Twitter sphere, I think that's what they call it, the Twitter sphere, the Instagram sphere, that he might be uh, doing a podcast run pretty soon. Now, I'm not saying I want Donald Trump to come talk to me in the Netherlands if he wants to, you know, whatever. But if he decides to, that's his own choice. I'll love him. I'll greet him kindly. You know, I don't agree with his politics, but I agree with his, uh, his panache, okay? But listen to him. Anybody who, anybody who likes him that's listening to this right now, I'm, I'm sure you, I don't need to convince you. The man's hilarious, okay? Anybody who doesn't like Donald Trump, listen to him. He's fucking hilarious. He might make you laugh at the worst. Uh, well, at best... Or no, at worst, you might vote for him. At best, you might like him. But he is just a, a character. He's a, he is a personification of what America has become, what America will continue to grow into. Um, I think the hatred and the, the ridicule that he receives from mindless people who don't actually listen to anything he says is unwarranted I don't agree with the guy most of the time like 75% of the time but I do listen to what he says and I do agree I do understand his point of view and I do understand the people who support him's point of view but I don't agree with him see that's that's okay see that's what we were supposed to do as people in America, we were supposed to be a shining beacon, an example for the rest of the world to show, hey, look, you know, we can have dissident of thought. We can have um, different viewpoints about our culture, about our politics, about our religion. All these things were supposed to be allowed because we lived in a free society. We lived, lived, ED, past tense, lived in a free society. We do not live in a free society anymore. I don't live in a free society because I live in the Netherlands. My cohorts, my people, my lineage in America, they do not live in a free society because they live in America. And unfortunately, that has changed and is also 
now negatively setting a precedent for the rest of the world. Because the rest of the world, you know, they turn on the TV, they flip through the channels, and they say, hey, look what America's doing. If America's doing it, then that must mean that's what we can do. That's what we're allowed to do. And I don't like that. I think that we should uh, remember that allowing different viewpoints is an acceptable American way of life. Um, you can just disagree and move the fuck on. You know, walk on. Uh, go and do your grocery shopping. Go to work. Deal with your own bullshit. And quit worrying about what other people think. And this goes for, you know, left, right, everywhere in between. Just leave people alone. Let them do their shit. When they encroach upon your space... All right, fucking slap him around like Bugs Bunny with his cotton gloves. Deal with the issue then. But until then, just fucking mind your business. It's not that hard. So that's what I got to say about Donald Trump. What I have to say about this uh, whole <clears throat> Jonah Hill thing. This has been blowing up. I don't know why. I don't know why this guy gets dragged through the media and through social, especially social media, every time he does anything. The guy loses weight. They make fun of him because now he's like perpetuating a healthy stereotype. Guy gets fat for a role. Then they're making fun of him because now he's glamorizing obesity. Um, guy bangs a black girl. Then all of a sudden they're making fun of him for being, you know, just getting lost in the sauce. It don't matter. Everything this boy does, he gets fucking made fun of. I don't get it. But the latest thing is that um, his ex-girlfriend, I don't even know her name. I don't want to know her name. I never knew her name in the beginning. So it doesn't bother me not to know it while I'm even ranting about this. All I know, a uh, strange surfer girl that I've never heard of released messages from Jonah Hill and now everybody's angry at him I don't get it uh, I thought we don't like uh, I thought we were about me too and revenge porn all that shit you know every time like a guy releases a sex tape where he's banging some OnlyFans star she sues him and she gets millions of dollars because some basketball player release her sex tape. But as soon as the tables are turned and some chick turns around and releases private information between two consenting adults in their own private life, releases it to the media, now we support it? No, fuck that. I don't get it. That's stupid. Uh, but I, I don't even... I'm not even that big of a fan of Jonah Hill. I never have been. I thought he was funny and like uh, super bad back way back in high school, you know? But I... I'm not like a super fan of him, but in this, like, my God, the guy's getting railed for what? Being vulnerable? And that brings me to my point. Vulnerability as a, a man in America anymore is a, not a two-sided blade. It's like a, an infinity-sided blade. No matter how you hold it, you're going to get fucked. Okay? You can, like... Right now, the whole idea is that there's this problem with masculinity, with men, okay? You can't be too masculine because that's perpetuating stereotypes. But then the moment a guy, a famous guy, feels uncomfortable in a relationship, goes to his therapist, gets advice from a professional who he has paid probably fucking hundreds of thousands of dollars to get analyzed by, gets a little bit of help. And they tell him, hey, you know, be vulnerable. Tell the woman how you feel. Stand up for yourself. Set your boundaries. As soon as he does that, as soon as he actually does the thing that he's, that society has said, hey, don't do. Or says society has been saying to do. Sorry. Flub my words there a bit. But as soon as he does the thing that society has been begging of famous men in America to do for the past 10 years, he gets fucking run through the ringer for it. And that's bullshit. And I think it's, it's, it's perpetuating a, 
an ideal in America where you are stuck in limbo, constant. There's a there's a constant masculine limbo. You can neither be too masculine for fear that you are just perpetuating a stereotype, and you can never be too vulnerable because then the moment that you start trying to use your feelings to advance your yourself, then you get accused of being manipulative and controlling, which is bullshit because nobody complains about it when a woman says, these are my feelings, okay? Either way, we should just listen. You know, if a woman tells you these are her feelings, listen. If a man tells you these are his feelings, listen. Don't accuse either side of being fucking manipulative or try or, or throw your messages and your your pictures out on to Twitter and Instagram. I don't even know where they fucking came from. See, I don't even know. That's the problem nowadays. You don't even know where this shit originates. It just pops up out of the ether. And all of a sudden, the world hates Jonah Hill because he took advice from a professional and said, hey, these are my boundaries. It's fucking insane. Uh, that's going to be a whole nother episode. I'll do a whole nother deep dive into uh, what I think about the development of masculinity in America today. But that's for another day. That's for a sweet fall day when the when the rain's just drizzling. And, yeah, the sun's giving me too much energy to try to focus on that. I'll just sound like a raging lunatic. But topic number three, <clears throat> the reality of the universe. Yes. Okay. So a wise man once said, and by wise man, I mean the grandfather and three ninjas. He said that there are three things to focus on in life. The mind, the body, and the spirit. Okay? Mind, the body, and the spirit. Now, everyone took this when we were kids as just the ramblings of a Japanese caricature in a children's movie. Okay? I didn't. I listened. I thought to myself, okay, this old wise Japanese man is telling me that I need to take care of my mind, my body, and my spirit. I didn't always listen. I haven't always listened. But what do you want? My cat's looking at me. I apologize. Yes, walk out. Anyway, mind, body, and spirit. I think there has been since the dawn of time, since cavemen were around, since throughout all the kingdoms, all the uh, nations that have existed throughout human history, there has been an eternal struggle for the mind, the body, and the spirit. And these are all three represented by three different uh, points of humanity. Okay? We have religion, we have philosophy, and we have science. Now, we can all read the history books, and we can all read the struggles and the trials, the tribulations that have arose from the wars that have been fought between religion and science, between science and philosophy, between philosophy and religion, back and forth. We all know this. No one is disagreeing that wars have been fought in the past over disagreements between these three uh, perceptions of our, re- our of our reality. Okay, that any war you can bring up, any crusade, any any biblical event, any scientific revolution, you know, Galileo versus the church, uh, Jesus versus the Romans, it doesn't matter. Anything you can any war, any conflict you can bring up is always going to dissolve into either religion fighting science or science versus philosophy or philosophy versus religion. It doesn't matter. We've forgotten that. We have forgotten that. And there's a reason we have forgotten that. It's because the past 100 years has been dominated by science. Science won. Science won the... uh, 20th century science proved its point okay 
Now, you may think, okay, well, science is science. It's irrefutable. No, science is the awareness of our reality based upon our physical senses. That's what science is. Science is how we interpret our reality around us as humans based on the physical capabilities that we possess. Religion is processing our our environment, our reality, okay, through our 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 heart, our spiritual abilities, our spiritual capabilities. This is religion. Philosophy is comprehending reality around us through our mental capabilities, asking why, asking how, trying to figure out the truth. Now, we can see that throughout history there have been periods where each has reigned supreme. Obviously, there was a time period in the dark to middle ages where religion was the the supreme mode of thought okay from from Jesus Christ to the convent of Islam and everything in between you had spirituality you had religion taking forefront now this was a period where that was the domineering mode of thought for humanity now if we look back during the the Greek Roman period of of time we had reason okay we had the the mental philosophy we had the ability to ask why and now since the early 1900s well early 1800s i would say since the second renaissance we have this uh the scientific revolution where Asking why was no longer enough. Enough. You had to prove why. You had to show this is what the effect of why, of how. And this is trying to recognize the world through science, through our physical self. These are the constant struggles that humanity faces. And I believe, this is my own thought, my own conspiracy, if you we'll call it that, that throughout history there has been a constant struggle between these three factions, and they are represented through many powerful organizations. We'll we'll not get into that now because, you know, it will confuse some people and it will also get me banned off YouTube, and I don't want to be banned so quickly because I would still like to grow my channel before I start talking some bullshit. But throughout history, we have been uh, fighting these three perceptions of reality. And I think that we have gone literally to the tipping point of the scientific revolution. And we are about to... uh, I I myself am a uh, philosopher. A philosopher from the heart, a philosopher from the mind, and a philosopher from the body. Um... That's not to brag. That's just to say it how it is. I've never been particularly religious. I've also never been particularly scientific. Okay, I believe in the extraterrestrials. I believe in ghosts. I believe in phenomena. So I'm a bit more uh, philosophic in my way of living. I hope to God. And by God, that's a whole other story. Fuck that. But I hope that as we approach this precipice of this global global society we have created as we approach this fight between science philosophy and religion i hope that philosophy wins over now science will obviously lose because it's had its day it's had the past 250 years and at the end of the day it's going to be religion or philosophy that takes over. Now, we can all pick our side. Do you want to be a philosophical uh, consoir? Do you want to be a, a religious man, a pious man? It's up to you. I, I, 
honestly, I can get along with either. I just personally, myself, I prefer the philosophical side of things. But it will be a a swing of reality. It will be a recognition through a global consciousness that things have changed. And we are at the precipice of it. I choose philosophy, my friends. I hope that you will too. Uh, this whole science shit has failed to work because now we are all, I think we can all agree, we're laughing at the face of science. Um, there are people in our culture, in our society, that are just hell-bent on overturning the foundations of what we recognize as science, whether it be through biological science, um, physical science, physics, biology, mathematics are even under attack nowadays. So from the left and the right perspective, science is, has been under attack and overthrown. So the only results at the end of this battle are going to be Philosophical ideas, philosophical ideals, or religious ideals. I vote philosophical because I think always asking why is better than asking when. Um, yeah, see, okay, now I'm ranting too much. That was my uh, sun-riddled brain getting that out of the way. I got a heat stroke. Th- I'm pretty sure I got a heat stroke. Not true, but I think so. Anyway, thanks for listening. Goodbye.